Buongiorno and welcome. Uh, um, I have been publishing a few lasagna on the Tortellino channel, also pasta bake and uh, cannelloni. I have come up with an idea and uh, once a week I want to do a different lasagna and uh, most probably likely to be more vegetarian than anything else. And today I'll start uh, with uh, a broccoli lasagna and I'll carry on until I run out of idea and imagination. I will tell you at the end of uh, every video if it's any good and if it's not good I'll tell you as well and then I'll share clearly the recipe with you and uh, you can try yourself. So a little bit of fun in the kitchen. <laughs> so let's get going with our broccoli lasagna today. So I'll start by removing the florets from uh, a broccoli. This is uh, 500 uh, grams in weight. And I'll chop them in small pieces and I add them to a pan with some cold water. I find that uh, the trunks from the broccoli and also cauliflowers coming to that are very very tasty and I generally tend to actually eat them raw as they are. However today I will be cleaning it and I will be chopping into small pieces and I will be adding it as well. Here as I said very small pieces. I place the saucepan on a hot hob and uh, I will uh, be putting the lid on and uh, once they reach the boil, I will let them boil for a good 10 minutes until they're nice and soft. In the meanwhile, I will be preparing a, a brechamella sauce uh, and uh, I will start by pouring uh, half a litre of uh, cold milk in a jug, a pinch of salt. I've set my scales back to zero and I'm going to be adding uh, some flour. I've got half a litre of milk and I will be putting today 40 grams of uh, flour because I want this brechamella sauce to be slightly more liquidy than normal. And using my spoon I'll uh, mix it while it's cold and uh, making sure that uh, all of the flour gets uh, absorbed and dissolved in the milk. And I pour it uh, as it is in another saucepan on the hob. And keep on stirring. In the meantime the broccoli have actually start boiling so I'm going to turn them down onto a simmering uh, temperature point, maybe number four, and leave them for 10 minutes from now. So my brechamella has been um, cooking now for four or five minutes uh, and has been on a fairly, on the maximum setting actually, and uh, if you look you'll start seeing that a few little bubbles are beginning to appear and boiling in the middle. So I will uh, give it uh, another 30 seconds on the hob. I'll just turn the hob off and I will be removing it from the hob and I will stir it for another 20 seconds and that will be done. I'll put the lid on it and uh, I will put on one side for later. So moving on onto the next part of the recipe, I've got a very small handful of uh, almonds, literally 20 grams, and I'm going to grind them. And I've left them quite chunky, I haven't actually pulverized them, I think um, it's quite important that. Pour a little amount of olive oil in a pan. And literally no more than a couple of tablespoons of uh, bread crumbs. And add also the almonds. A little salt, literally just a pinch. And a little pepper. So back on the stove again and uh, turn the heat up high and uh, start roasting your bread crumbs and uh, almonds together. After a few minutes, literally three to four minutes so on a high temperature, the oil will have been absorbed by the bread crumbs and uh, they will have dried and everything is nicely toasted. So do not leave it much longer because otherwise they will burn. In the meantime, and I'm going to show you, the broccoli is cooked and uh, I have drained it and uh, I have uh, reserved a few little ones for the top of uh, the lasagna so that uh, we, for decoration purposes we can uh, leave them on the top at the end. Next job is to blend the broccoli together with the blender. I've placed them in a the jug and I start with uh, my blender. I have kept some of the cooking water and I'm going to be adding it next. A little bit more water. And the rest of it. And here I have achieved a nice smooth consistency. Imagine you're making a lasagna with uh, a tomato sauce or ragu and uh, you are 
trying to get to something which is not too dissimilar, but clearly not as liquidy. So this is very good, I'm very pleased with it. And as it is, I'm going to add it to my bréchamel sauce, to make a single sauce. And mix it all together until you get a lighter greeny colour compared to the broccoli. I'm going to check it for salt. And it does need some salt, so I'm going to add it now. And now it's perfect. And next I'll be moving on to the cheese preparation. I have grated the 60 grams of parmesan cheese. I will let you know later if I need more. And today I will be using scamorza as a cheese. This is a, a typical Italian cheese. You will find it in most supermarkets. It's got this uh, snowman sort of shape. <laughs> and it's um, got a smoky flavor, but also it's very, very stringy. And I'll be taking a few slices so that it can go as a filling of my lasagna. And I think we are there, uh, ready to put our lasagna together. I will be using some uh, fresh pasta today. So I will apply a little of my sauce at the bottom and uh, some of my pasta, which you can cut with a knife to give it a proper shape. A few more blobs of sauce. As with any lasagna, you start with a little sauce at the bottom and then you increase the quantity as you go up. And I'll put some of my scamorza cheese, a generous sprinkle of parmesan, And like a normal lasagna, just carry on. And I've reached the last layer. I've done five layers uh, all together. And as you will see, there is a, a, a lot more um, sauce at the very, very top because this will find its way down as the lasagna cooks. Now I'm at the very top. So I'll be sprinkling uh, some of my toasted almond uh, with uh, my toasted bread. This will give it a nice crunchiness uh, at the end, hopefully. <laughs> And I will add the remainder of my parmesan cheese, which was enough, I didn't have to add to it. And at the very, very top, <laughs> using a little bit of imagination and creativity, I will be putting uh, the remaining florets that uh, I reserved for the end. And that is it for now. We will see what it tastes like once it's out of the oven. I'm going to pop it in uh, the oven uh, at a temperature of 180 degrees, as normal, like you would do for a lasagna for approximately 30 to 35 minutes. The first 20 minutes I'll cover with some tin foil and then I will let it brown for the last 15 minutes. So I'll see you then. <laughs> Hopefully it will taste good. <laughs> and I am back, <laughs> just out of the oven. It's really hot, piping hot. So I will leave it to rest for five minutes and then I'll cut a slice and we'll see what we've done. <laughs> First of all, like I do with every lasagna, I go around the edges to loosen it up so that uh, it doesn't get stuck. It feels nice and moist, so, so far so good. Well, from where I'm standing, it looks beautiful, <laughs> I have to say. Here you can see all the nice layers, lovely color, and uh, the cheese has melted inside beautifully. So all we have left to do is uh, to give it uh, a taste. So let's go for it. Mmm, mm, it's an excellent start. It's really delicious. If you like broccoli and you like cheese and you like lasagna, mm, it's a great start. Lovely vegetarian meal. I'm not just saying it. I can taste uh, everything actually and uh, the addition of the almonds and uh, the roasted um, toasted bread on top, it's quite uh, nice and crunchy. And um, make sure that if you do make it, that uh, you have got a liquidy bréchamel sauce and uh, if you're blending your broccoli keep uh, a good glass of uh, vegetable water because you want it to be nice and moist. So it's a good start for our lasagna journey creative uh, making and I'll let you think what to do next week. 
But if you do have any suggestions of uh, vegetarians, preferably lasagna that you'd like me to make, by all means, send me some comments and uh, I'll try. <laughs> Thank you for watching and uh, see you later. Bye.